Hi folks, Warren here again, and I just wanted to make a very brief video in response to a question on the Moto forums from John Carter, who was asking about uh, different ways that people have used for uh, solving twist problems on limbs. So I'm going to show you the solution that I have for this particular character, and it's a very, very simple one. Um, probably for rigging guru types, it's a knuckle dragging method. But I've tried a few different ways of doing it, and of course, uh, one method would have been to segment uh, the forearm into a series of joints, and then to um, rig those to twist with a uh, falling off mount as you go as you go down it. You could also use deformers, but I'll, I'll show you the method I've got here. It's very very simple. So if I go into vertex map mode, and I'll select my forearm you can see that this joint's influence is falling off as it travels down the forearm. And then here at the wrist, I actually have two joints. So my first joint I've called uh, my forearm ulna joint. And as you can see, its weighting has got a fall off traveling up the forearm. And then the next joint is right beside it is this wrist joint or hand joint. Um, and you can see its weighting is a fairly sharp fall off um, to the next joint. So between between its the ulna's influence on the hand and the hand influence on the ulna, it's a fairly crisp delineation. Whereas the ulna has this fall off up the arm. Okay. And this is why I've got this arrangement in practice. Because now with the hand when I do a rotation, I want a fairly sharp bend for a movement like that. Like when you're moving your hand up or down or tilting it um, you know, side to side, you want a pretty crisp bend here at the, uh, uh, at the corners, right? A crease around the wrist. But if you're twisting, then you don't want that crisp weighting anymore because then it would be like twisting a rubber hose and you'd have a compression right around that that point so what i've done and i'll show you here in setup very simple all i've done is taken wired the uh, z rotation from my hand joint uh, to the next little joint right next to it that uh, ulna uh, joint. So as the hand rotates on Z, so too does the ulna rotate on Z. And the result of that is this. So if I twist the hand, the ulna twists the next joint down, which has that long fall off along it. And as you can see here, this, this bending happening, the twisting happening um, on the geometry on the forearm, it's going to twist following that fall off and that's going to reduce the compression that we would otherwise get here uh, at the wrist. So if I go into a preview mode you can see it's preserving the volume uh, pretty pretty decently there. If I come back to a more neutral you can get an idea here in the rendered view of what, what we've got on the wrist versus if I rotate it, uh, twist it, sorry, uh, along that, you can see the, the ulna is working pretty decently. So it's working well enough for my purposes with this particular character. Um, again, there's many different ways of doing this. There's a second reason why I chose that for this character. And, uh, the rigging on this character is serving a couple purposes. One is to allow a combination of mocap uh, and control on it which I guess I'll get into later down the road, how we're working with mocap stuff. Um, but let me just turn on some of the rigging controls here. And you can see I've got an IK uh, goal, and this IK is attached to that first uh, ulna joint, leaving the hand free to do its own thing for rotations. The nice part about that is I'm using a 2D uh, planar solver for the arm, because I find it's very stable um, and it has some properties that 
I want with this particular rig. But one of the aspects with the 2D planar solver is that the rotations really um, don't, don't really matter for that. So in this particular case, I've got my nice uh, um, IK stuff happening at the ulna joint. And then for the hand, I've still got my, you know, my hand movement uh, down beyond that. So that's another reason. And again, the, you can do the twist and that works and results in pretty good, uh, pretty decent deformations for what I want. So that's, uh, that's the solution that I'm using for this particular character with the, with the ulnarist. I hope this was helpful and thanks for watching.